Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to have a little chat about kit bashing. Not just kit bashing, the cost of kit bashing specifically. Because I saw a comment earlier today, it was on Twitter, not on YouTube actually, that essentially was along the lines of, I don't get kit bashing, waste of plastic, definitely a waste of money. And I wanted to talk about that just a little bit, because I don't think it's anywhere near that simple. And I think there's a lot of personal value involved in kit bashing and working out whether something is worth it or not. So there are some situations where I'd suggest that perhaps perhaps not worth it. I mean, if you are someone who dislikes the process of putting models together, spending extra money on extra bits to put on the models you're already not really all that keen on having to mess about with in the first place, that's going to have low value for you. The amount of money that you spend is probably not going to be kind of offset by your enjoyment of the task or anything like that. In that kind of situation, that is not something that would be personally worth it. And that's where a lot of a lot of it comes from in terms of value, I find, is it's less about the monetary cost and more about how much you get out of it, or at least how much you enjoy doing it in comparison to how much you've spent. I mean, if you absolutely love painting models but don't like putting them together, it's not really going to feel all that great having to pay to kit bash something that you want to run if you don't have all the pieces or if you need, like, an extra Avenger Gatling cannon, for instance. Say you want to run a, uh, a Chaos Knight and you want to take two of those, well, the Imperial Knight kit only comes with one. And so what are you going to do? You've got to find another one somewhere else. Now, in some situations, things like that don't matter. I mean, it's not real. I suppose it is technically a kit bash because you're taking two of the same kit and putting one thing from one of them onto the other to give that two of the same thing. That was a confusing sentence. But if, for instance, you were always planning on running two or three knights and one of them was going to have two Avenger Gatling cannons, buying two Imperial Knight kits is not a waste. You were going to use them both anyway. You wanted that number of knights to begin with. All you're doing is just taking a weapon off one, putting it on the other, you're set, you're done. There's no real extra outlay on top of what the model would have cost to assemble and run for the number of points it is anyway. Of course, if you don't want to do that, to eBay you have to go. You need to find an Avenger Gatling cannon, or you need to find a third party part that is pretty much the same thing, and that's extra cost for that model, and you're not getting anything else or anything extra in terms of, in terms of use, so to speak. That's where it starts to get a bit a bit janky and a bit wonky. When you're looking directly at a price for the model like compared to points that that model costs to use on the tabletop, that's where sometimes kit bashing can look like a total time and money like total time and money sink, really. I mean, if you look at some of the conversions that people do, the cost of them is like massive, like absolutely colossal. And what they get out of it is a model that is the same number of points as someone's completely stock model. Like a Knight Valiant, for instance, with, uh, with oh, what is her name? The uh, the Sister of Battle canoness that's got the floating eagle pulpit with the heavy flamers. I've seen someone do a Knight Valiant that has that pulpit in front of the chest and it's like, it's like her personal ride. And of course, you can only run that as a Knight Valiant and so you've spent however much on an extra bit of kit but you're not getting any extra tabletop value. In that situation, someone who is not interested in the kit bashing side of things has every right to go, that's too expensive for me, because it is for them. But for the person building it, it's not, because the actual monetary cost is only half the story. When it comes to building kit bashes just because you really want to make something different, something unique, you've had an idea and you just want to do it, the actual point value of the model at the end of it is not really at the forefront of your mind. I mean, I use the example of the Chaos Knight with two Avenger Gatling cannons. I'm in the process of building a Chaos Knight with two Avenger Gatling cannons, but it's a little bit different because instead of using two Gatling cannons, I'm using a uh, a Vulcan Mega Bolter from a Chaos Warhound. Now, that undeniably is uh, is kind of pricey. I'm not going to lie. I mean, the knight itself is, what, 95 quid if you get it from Games Workshop Store? And the Mega Bolter is an extra 45 on top of that from Forge World. But I had an idea for doing that, and I thought that would be fun and interesting and, at the very least, kind of funny. And 
so that's what I did. So the uh, the gun sits there, he holds it there, and it's like the underslung look, which quite a few of my models have, because it, I don't know, I just quite like the look of it. It looks fun. That is an expensive kit bash. I'm not going to lie. It's obviously expensive. I mean, £45 for just a another piece of the model is, for most people, not going to be worth it. That by itself is 95 And so, if all you were doing was wanting to get a Chaos Knight on the table with two Avenger Gatling Cannons, that is the worst way to go about it. It's definitely the worst way, because it's too expensive and it's too clunky. It's really frustrating to try and actually pose it properly, which I'm not trying to uh, do right now, because it's just not worth it. Um, <laughs> but it was worth it to me, because I don't care about the end result of points on the table. What I cared about was taking an idea I had, messing around with it, deciding what worked best, trying multiple different methods. Like, this model has taken hours and hours to put together, and it's not together yet. I mean, it's... Yes, it does have a couple of missile launches on the top of it, which were a late addition, just because I <laughs> felt like doing it. But, I mean, even that's from a Leviathan Dreadnought. No, that's from a Custodes Leviathan, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, but, like, the actual points cost was irrelevant for this. I had an idea, I wanted to do that idea, and I knew that it would take me hours and hours and hours and hours and hours just to get it to a point I was happy with before I could even start painting it. But I like that part of the process. I enjoy that part of the process. That is, like, one of the main driving things for this hobby for me. For me, it goes, like, assembly, playing, painting, in that order. I mean, I enjoy painting way more than I used to, a hell of a lot more than I used to. You know, with the discovery of a different technique and finding ways to paint using that, I enjoy it way more than I did. But I still prefer putting models together. And I still prefer playing over painting. I just know that painting is necessary, and so I do it. But I'm not looking at the, like, cost of that kit, of that kit bash from a kind of, oh, well, that's expensive for what it is mindset. I'm looking at it in a... How am I going to enjoy doing this? Am I going to enjoy putting this together? Am I going to enjoy the process of like, working out how to get this pose down? How best to alter the legs for this, which I've had to do. Alter the waist, which I've also had to do. Work out how to offset the weight of the thing, which I have also had to do. But it's all stuff I enjoy. It's all stuff that I really like doing. It's all stuff that is the most fun part of the hobby for me. It's the same story with... This guy, this stupid Redemptor, with his uh, with his Avenger Gatling Cannon, funnily enough, uh, given that we were talking about them earlier. I mean, this is part of the idea for that Chaos Knight. You know, when I did that small purge of the Pit Force, I wanted models that were a little bit different, a little bit interesting. And so, I had three Centurions, which again had been altered to have a similar pose to that. And I had this, and that kind of led to the stupid joke of, okay, well, when are you going to do the knight holding a warhound gun? And so I thought that would be fun, so that's what I did. I had to grab that off eBay, which means that this is, you know, more expensive than it should be. But I thoroughly enjoyed every moment of putting this together. I really had fun kind of working out how best to attach the weapon, how best to do the pose, whether I wanted to use two fists completely open, whether I needed to convert one of them to be, you know, uh, left hand, right hand instead of left hand, I, I enjoyed it, and so it was worth it. The thing is, with stuff like that, there are things that obviously do cost more for the same end result, but then there's also situations whereby, I mean, for the most part, I try and make sure that anything I kit bash any like kits that I buy, I use pretty much everything of, or at least within the same realm of use as you would do normally. So, uh, an example, I just in fact, I think one of the more recent examples that I have is when Tor Garadon came out. I was in the process of building another model for my my uh, D and D character, who is a Warforged, and I really wanted the massive fist off Tor Garadon because it looks quality. Part of the character development for the character is the fact that he is 
slowly upgrading and building himself new versions of himself and kind of improving on stuff and so i thought him actually having you know a proper fist instead of just two snappy claws would be a cool thing to do so i've got the ambot kit which i had already used one of these to make the first version of this character and i got torgaridon and i got him primarily for the fist because i wanted that piece now that's obviously quite a bit of money to spend on one small component that i then ch chopped in half and stuck on the end of an amber arm but the rest of that kit went towards that which is a chaos lord so i still used the body i mean i've still used most of most of torgaridon in some way or another i mean that's his body admittedly his cape there's a backpack from the old chaos um uh, chaos space marines kit there's a storm bolter from i think just one of the many Terminator kits that I've had. Uh, obviously, that arm is from uh, is from uh, an orc biker knob. The skull on his backpack that's from the Lorgar kit, uh, and the head is a Night Lord's head. But I've used his other arm on a different model. I've used the fist on the D and D character. I've used his head on admittedly severed on someone else's base but i've still used every part of the torgaridon kit i mean even the little bit of rubble that he stands on that he's like got his foot up against that's there i even used that and i used it for something totally different it's on the base of a dreadnought it's a similar thing with uh with this guy so this is the chapter master of the of my scar lord's force which is just pretty much all terminators this was technically an expensive kit bash. I mean, that is the uh, that's one of the one of the prey tools from Forge World. So you get a a Terminator in cataphractic armor, and you get a uh, just a, a power armored guy. Uh, that's what the body is for him. He's got two Centurion shoulder pads. He's got uh, Tiberos, Tiberos, however you know pronounce it, the Red Wake's arms and helmet. He's got like a random cloak from Anvil Industries. He's got a bit of chain. Uh, I don't know where the uh, the Iron Halo is from. I can't remember. Bunch of spikes off a Chaos Vehicle Sprue. And a little shield, again, off... Uh, I think that might be Grey Knights, actually. So, there's a bunch of stuff on here. All stuff that you could say, why would you buy all of that just to make one character? Well, I bought the Terminator and I bought Tiberos uh, to make that character. But it's not like the rest of it hasn't ever been used, because... This tech marine is from is from that Praetor kit. So this like this this guy is now a tech marine for my dreadnought army, and he's using pieces that I had left over from uh, from building my chapter master all those years ago. The shoulder pads that I got from the Centurions, I had two going spare because when I built my Centurions, I didn't want them all to have both shoulder pads. I wanted one to have both, one to have one on the left, one to have one on the right. So I had two left over. When it came to the cloak, that was something that was bought, you know, ages ago for a, the the rest of the Terminators that I'd put together. And so that is another piece that just ended up being used. And that's what's happened with a lot of this stuff. It's it's not like you it's not like spending a massive shed load of money for one specific thing and then never using anything else. And I think that might be part of the misconception. And I think that might be part of the thing that perhaps would put people off in some cases, where you look at a model that is a an amalgamation of so many things, you know. I, I mean, you know, a good example being being this stupid Chaos Knight. Because it is going to have a Warhound Vulcan Megabolter. It's also got that off a of Custodes Dreadnought. He's got that off an Imperial Knight kit. But that's, for a lot of the time, the exception. It's not the rule. It's not how I approach every single kit bash. And it's, I think, how most people don't approach every single kit bash. It's not a case of buying a whole box for one specific thing. It's a case of buying a box because you want one or two things and knowing full well that there will come a point in the not-too-distant future where we're, where you will use everything else i mean i've bought three skaven warp lightning cannons so far i have not built a single skaven warp lightning cannon i've used the pieces on literally everything else 
The wheels have gone on various dreadnoughts and other vehicles. The massive crystals on the back have gone on my uh, my Ethernites, which are AMBOTs that have been kind of extended up and out. The cables from the Centurion kit that I built the Purge the Pit Force out of, which I never used anything else, have been used on God knows how many models at this point. The weapons on them have appeared on loads of other stuff. When it comes to the value of kit bashing, it is... It's literally a mix. When it comes to the cost, it's a mix of, like, how much you enjoy doing it and how much of it is going to be used elsewhere. And for most, I would suggest it's going to be used elsewhere a lot. You know, you never really buy something for a single piece. You you buy something because you want it and you know full well that... The rest of that kit is going to be really, really helpful for something else. I mean, even with uh, Anakara Scoria, which you know I've I've mentioned recently, that's something that I've been slowly working on because it's such a fiddly model. But I bought this knowing that I was going to stick another model on the front of it, a Neve Black Talon. In fact, Neve Black Talon's head is on a different model. <laughs> Her axes are being used by a Chaos Space Marine. The actual front of Anikara Scoria is not on this model, but it is going to be on a different model because as soon as I start building out uh, some of the allies for the Dread Mob, some Blood Angels and some uh, Salamanders because I want Brayarth Ash Mantle, um, and some Grey Knight stuff as well because that would be fun, he is going to appear on there. It's all it's all used, and it's all worth it because of that. And even if it wasn't all used, in some certain situations, the enjoyment you get from doing it is more than enough to justify the cost, because it's all about how much you personally like doing it, and how many hours you get out of it, and how much you enjoy doing it that matters. Like... I think that is the that is the pitfall. That's the fall down. That's the bit where it doesn't look like it makes sense because it's comparing the cost of an unmodified model to a modified model and how much they go for in terms of points on the tabletop. Whereas for most most of us who do this all the time and can't stop messing about with with uh, with models and leaving them stock and still have to kit bash the hell out of literally everything, the points aren't really the main consideration. The enjoyment of assembly is, and that's the bit that I think matters the most. It is, at the end of the day, just a hobby. And everyone's kind of enjoyment of it is centred in a different place. So if it's centred in kit bashing and assembly, then it's absolutely worth it to spend that extra amount if you know you're going to enjoy it and if you know you're going to be happy with the outcome. And let's face it, you can spend as long as you like on it. When it comes to things like just putting something together because you really want to, there's no deadline to meet. There's no there's no rush. There's no kind of driving, okay, this has to be done tomorrow. You can spend the time to get it how you want it to be. And if it takes one hour, great. If it takes 10 hours, as long as you're still enjoying it, it doesn't matter how, lo- like how long it's taken or really how much it's cost. It's... All, as always, with pretty much everything in this hobby, down to personal taste. That got very rambly. I do apologise. Let me know whether you are an avid kit basher and converter in the comments. If you've made like a insane, ridiculous conversion that was like massively expensive for what it is, I'd be really curious to know what it is. If you do get a kit, do you intend to use absolutely all of it? Or do you approach things from a single a single part point of view? And what do you do with the rest of it? Do you sell it on? Do you just stockpile it? What is your approach? Let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things. Patreon video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. And there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, who are now shipping out orders again. So if you want to grab 40k stuff or Age of Sigmar stuff, or a mixture of both to create some sort of amazing amalgamation, then uh, you can do so if you'd like. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.